My name's Goku, and I'm gonna beat you up. Bahimi, I'm straight, I swear. Dragon Ball! Remember that show? You should. If you don't, well, geez. You really missed out when you were seven years old. But let's be honest here. If you use the internet, you probably know what Dragon Ball is. And even if you don't, you can probably recognize these memorable characters, like Monkey Boy, or Green Doctor, or the one with the indecipherable gender. And luck has it that you've probably seen someone attempt to perform the Kamehameha in public at least once in your lifetime. Or attempt to perform it yourself. So I, like many other children, watched and loved Dragon Ball when they were younger. But do I still feel the same way about the show? Eh, not so much. I'd say that I'm not really a fan of Dragon Ball anymore, but that I don't hate it either. It's fine. Mostly because the fan base is generally associated with colored men who have autism, but also because you can correlate these same people to be rabid fans of things like Naruto and Sonic, My Little Pony, Five Nights at Freddy's. Alright, so if you've ever played a Dragon Ball game before, and I have, you know what you're in for. Smash the face buttons, fly around, punch your opponent, do some energy blasts. That's been the formula for these games for years. Nothing has ever really changed all that much. Sometimes for the better, and sometimes for the absolute worst. And I don't think I've ever been interested or excited in a Dragon Ball game in my life. And that really hasn't changed over the years, but... When I borrowed a copy of the game from my friend and I gave it a whirl, I was actually pleasantly surprised, which in turn resulted in my actual purchase of the game. And I know, right? It's a miracle. I actually bought a game for once. The main reason for my purchase being that this game actually changed the formula up a fair amount. For one thing, this is the first one that's ever been available on PC, ever. And if it hadn't have been, I wouldn't have purchased it in the first place. Wink wink, nudge nudge, developers. The most relevant new feature being that this time, you can actually make your own Dragon Ball character. Something that thousands of Dragon Ball fans have wanted since the very first time they played a Dragon Ball game. Take a look at what XXX Gogeta 420 XXX has to say about it. My original character, Guko, can finally be fully realized within the Dragon Ball universe. This is the greatest game ever. Thank you, Namco. Yes, and that means even I, the man with the virtual self-insertion fetish, as Mr. Liudu would lay claim to, can finally make myself into a Saiyan. Oh, fuck it. I'll just make a waifu. Custom characters come with a simple RPG system that allows you to level up, get new skills and abilities, and down the outfits of your favorite Dragon Ball characters from across the series. All this stuff fits into the canon quite well, as the existence of your character is based on, that's right, you guessed it, time travel! And it makes about as much sense as anything written in the Book of Mormon. But story isn't what you're here for. You're here because you want to beat up Vegeta, Frieza, Cell, Boo, and even Bill as your unique OC Dragon Ball character. And you can even make MLG montage parodies out of it too. Damn, son. I've personally never picked up any Dragon Ball games in the past, but the RPG elements that are added to your custom character tided me over to actually purchasing this one. And the fact that you can play in co-op with two of your friends, while albeit only in specific missions, not the story missions. Not to mention the huge roster of playable Dragon Ball characters, old and new. And this moves into the negatives I have about the game. While the character roster is huge, it is missing some characters that have been in previous games in the past. A somewhat more prominent issue, though, is that the servers are constantly crashing. In fact, the servers have been down almost the entire time I've been making this video. Oh, and oh man, Whew. the camera in this game, it can be a pain in the ass to manage at some points. And like any game with RPG elements, sometimes it can be annoying and tedious just to have to sit and grind certain missions for specific items. Though when you get down to it, 
Dragon Ball Xenoverse is a solid, visually appealing experience bundled with a ton of goodies and nods to die-hard Dragon Ball fans. This is a Dragon Ball game that a lot of fans have been waiting and asking for. And while it's nowhere near being the perfect Dragon Ball game in any aspect, it delivers at being an enjoyable and fun experience for newcomers and Dragon Ball fans alike.